We've been really enjoying our time, but we have a very special guest added to the broadcast today. So today it's Rick Renner and our special guest, Pastor Paul Renner. Thank you, Joseph, for adding me to the program today. It's a privilege to get to be here. Hi, everybody. Oh, my goodness. Thank you both for being here. And we're glad to be with you. You know, I, I enjoy you both so much because I've gotten the privilege to spend time with you in Moscow. I've had the privilege of seeing your church and what God really is doing there. And I'm just so grateful to have you both here with me today. For me, this is a high privilege and kind of a dream, a dream that's really manifested. So, you know, Joseph, it's such a privilege that our sons are all in ministry. It's amazing. We serve with Paul. We serve with Joel. Philip has his own ministry that's doing great. It's amazing. It's wonderful. I, I really think it's, um, you know, first in the natural, then in the spiritual. First uh, Corinthians 15, 46. I believe that the way you do life really is an example of how you do ministry and how you do everything. And your family, Rick, is just excellent. And um, thank you for being here. Thank both you. Of you. Thank you. Praise God. Well, Pastor Paul, I brought you on today, and you're so gracious to say yes and join us, because I want to talk further about Noah's Ark, some of your travels. Maybe we can get into talking about a little bit of your church in uh, the Good News Church in Moscow, which is a miracle, and it's amazing what's happening there. But do you mind if we start out a little bit talking about Noah's Ark? Sure. Okay, sir. Well, there was one thing that we kind of dialogued about, and you got into this topic of, of some of the sites and locations that were so significant with Noah's Ark. Rick, just help us. Would you want to unpack that a little bit or discuss it? Well, first of all, I want to say that it sounds like it's very exotic, these places we go to. Sure. And for an American, it's very exotic. For, but for us, Paul, it's just a few hours away. It's an amazing privilege to get to visit these places. Yes, it is. But for us, it's somewhere you can fly to and drive to. Yes. So it's not that far away from Moscow because Moscow's in Europe and it's all pretty close. <laughs> Just like Americans go to Florida for vacation, yes. Russians go to Turkey. Turkey is Russia's Florida. Oh, amazing. Okay. So, I mean, there are just jillions of flights. It's not expensive to go, yeah. but it's kind of hard to get to Noah's Ark because you've got to catch a flight. You've got to fly to a van, which is beautiful. <laughs> and then you've got to drive several hours until finally you get to the very eastern part of Turkey, which is right on the border of Armenia and Iran. Amazing. And there's been a lot of smugglers there. There's yep. been a lot of contraband. And so it may not be the safest place to go. <laughs> but you know what? We've lived in Russia a long time, hey, so none of that bothers us. You, you know what I find wonderful, too, is, Pastor Paul, is you you actually, now maybe I'm mistaken with this, but English has kind of become your second language. Is, is... I have two second languages. Okay. <laughs> okay. So my first second language is... Or English, and okay. my second second language is Russian. Okay, but I actually do most of my ministry, uh, any type of business conversation, uh, any uh, conflict uh, resolving, it's all in Russian for me. It's amazing. Uh, uh, I've actually only preached in English maybe once or twice. Okay, uh, I read my Bible in Russian. So if it's quoting scripture, it's quoting scripture in Russian. Uh, so yeah. And when we have a family get together, it's very interesting. <laughs> it's like half English, half Russian. And our sons grew up speaking really funny English. Like one time, my <laughs> son Joel came home and he said, Dad, you know, I saw something down the street by the studentiary. I said, studentiary? What is a studentiary? He <laughs> said, you know that place where students live? He meant dormitory. Oh, interesting. Uh, studentiary. Well, that's pretty good. That's, he made that up, but that's pretty good. <laughs> but we have a lot of fun with language. And, and the, the reason I bring that up is because the commitment that God put on you to go and be a part of the nation of Russia, the former Soviet Union. We love it. Oh, I, I love it. When we came there, you know, what the news says about things is pretty awesome. You know, we've been there half of my life. Yeah. For sure. More than half of you. Yes. <laughs> yes. When we you, moved, I, I was eight years old when eight we moved. Eight years old. Joel was two. Philip was six. Yes. And uh, we, we love it. And so... We know more than what people see on the news. We, we know the reality. You say it really well. You know, kind of like how you determine the news is kind of what part of the world you live in. That's right. And it's Everybody really, has propaganda. It, it's good. And so, you know, I also enjoy when you guys do home group and you sit together. It was an inspiration for me, and that's why you see some of the things we do. I watched you guys for years. I'd watch Pastor Paul breaking down the Word of God and you guys talking from home group. And so when I finally saw the couches with the black, white, and red squares, I, I just sat there for a moment. I took selfies and I sent it back to Heather. I'm like, you know, look at this. And so just thank you. You guys have been such an inspiration. Oh, it's a blessing. But Joseph, because of where we live, we're just a couple hours. For example, before all these sanctions, 
we were just two and a half hours from Tel Aviv. Okay. Two hours from Istanbul, two hours from Athens, two and a half hours from Rome. So these places are not yeah. far for us. No. So I take my film crew and we go to these places. It's amazing. I mean, really some amazing places. And because we were going to Noah's Ark, I decided that I'm going to take at least two of my sons with me. Philip yes. was in America. So Paul and Joel came with us. We got to go. It was a lot of fun to get to go on how, that trip. How did it hit you, Paul, when you finally got there? Yeah, please. There was some expectation. And so when we finally got up the hill to the first spot where you can actually see the whole arc, they call it the Ron Wyatt spot. Uh -huh. It's kind of a lower view on the road where you can stop and you can just see it laying right there. Oh, and, wow. and so th there was a lot of expectation that one was like, is this really happening? Is this, wow. is this, wow, and you can see it. And so it was this immediate photo selfie time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like, I gotta take a picture and I gotta send somebody a picture, it was, it was immediate. <laughs> uh, but then once you get up closer to the ark and, and you walk through the mud and you get to the ark and you, you take a walk around the ark and you kind of begin to realize this is where we're gonna film, this is where we're gonna stand and wow, this is windy. And what are we gonna do if there's sun? And what are we gonna do if there's too much cloud? <laughs> and who's gonna do what because right. it's a team and everybody's got to carry their stuff yes and I mean, you really have to carry the stuff to the filming spot so it's quite a hike to the spot it's very rugged and, i mean and so very rugged it's it's rugged we were very yeah. you can lose your breath because of the altitude now i know you're from colorado springs it may not bother you but it's high altitude but you know finally what we did we hired a local guy with a tractor <laughs> to take us up 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 through the Curtis Village, all the way up through the ruts. All I mean, some of those roads, it looks like you're going to fall into a gully because I needed to film. Yeah. And I didn't want to be out of breath. So he would park the tractor <laughs> just below the bow of the ship. Yeah, as close as he could get. That's and amazing. And we'd walk on up. Wow. Just, I'll tell you, that tractor is terrible. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Rough yeah. ride. There's this funny photo of me with my hands on Dad's on my, ears. I've uh, seen it. At the altar. And uh, we posted it. And someone said, oh, look how sweet that is. Uh, the son is praying for his father. So, no, he was trying to warm my no, ears. No, he was trying to keep his ears warm because it's cold. It's windy. <laughs> Got to protect the talent. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the ark landed on the top uh, near what today is the Iranian border. And, you know, over all these years, it's moved down to its present location. Yeah. But I think about maybe 300 meters, Paul, maybe 200 meters from that location. The altar. Is the altar. Okay. And the altar is referred to in Genesis chapter 8. Okay. And the Bible says. Yes. And Noah built it an altar unto the Lord. And verse 21 says, The Lord smelled a sweet savor. And it was there that God began to make his covenant with man that he would never flood the earth again. And God put a rainbow in the sky. Well, there's a Kurdish village there. Okay. And even the ancient church fathers and historical writers that were pagans. Mm hmm they all wrote about the Kurdish village that's there. Wow. And that Kurdish village has been there for thousands of years. No kidding. And those people, they were called the Cordanians in the ancient documents, but it's Kurds. Okay. And they have identified the place for thousands of years where Noah offered his first sacrifice. That is remarkable, Rick. Can we show it? Yes, we can. We have a clip Let's show of this. It. Let's, so let's it's there, and it really is the altar where Noah offered his first sacrifice mm -hmm. to the Lord. Yeah. Well, now that's... that's what. Whoop, 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 whoop. There we go, there we go, there we go. All right, let's begin right there. So here's the scripture. Noah built in an altar unto the Lord. Let's keep moving. So he took of every clean beast, and every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Yes. And then, so here we have an illustration of Noah doing that. Your illustrations are awesome. Well, it's a, it's a blessing. This is the altar. This is a massive, massive stone, and it is the only stone in the area that could have been used as an altar. Let's pause that just for a moment. Okay, in the distance, you can see Mount Ararat and mm. Lesser Ararat. Mm -hmm. And right across the top of this is a man-made channel that was created with ancient instruments. And this is where the sacrifices were offered and the blood flowed through that channel. Who, it who came right have, off the side. Who would have offered sacrifices? There? Noah. Noah. This right? is where Noah offered the sacrifices when they came off the ark. Let's keep going. And Paul, I'm going to let you speak about this as well. Please, this Paul. stone is immense. I'll show you when you go. I can't wait. So here you can see this is where they offered the sacrifices. And this is a channel. This is not natural. This is a channel that's been cut thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. And the blood drained off right like so this. So it's, it's you could make the argument that Noah chiseled this? Yes, Noah chiseled this. Noah chiseled this. The Bible says he built it an altar. He just used what was there. That is amazing. That was made by Noah. Wow. Joseph, I believe it a thousand percent. 
Let's keep going. Isn't that amazing? I mean, we're looking at Bible. To me, it impacted me more than any place I've ever been. This is where they would have offered the sacrifices, and this is that channel that just flows right off the side. Let's keep going. You know, all you have to do is speak to the locals who've been there for thousands of years. They, they, they take you to these places. Like, oh, yeah. so you see this? This is man-made. Look at that. So the blood just flowed like this. Blood flowed there. And just in the background, in the background, you can see Ararat and Lesser Ararat today. They may not have existed at that time. Yeah. But this is where Noah was when he offered the sacrifice. And when God began to make his covenants, God said, don't eat dr blood, don't drink blood. Yep. And the rainbow appeared. Paul, it is magnificent, isn't it? Since we were so busy filming uh, and thinking about... I can't really enjoy the sights. I'm working. You, you, so, you know, you're working. You're thinking about this. You're thinking about that. You're thinking about the wind. You're thinking about the sun. You're thinking about the sound. And you got to you know, help with the nose. And you got to pick up the nose. And I need my Bible. And let's move to a different location. And so we're so busy filming... It's a lot of work. Yes. ...that you can't really take it in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but when we got to the altar... There's not much there to see okay. besides the altar. Sure. You, you get the altar, huge stone, magnificent view, but there's not a lot of distraction. There's, I see. there's nothing else to look out, there's look at, there's nothing, there's nowhere else to go. And But it's so close to where the ark landed that it's logical. I mean, you don't have to use your imagination that this is where it happened. It's just it's practical. It makes sense. Paul. And when we got up there and and you and you realize this is where God said no more. Mm. I will not uh, destroy the earth with water again. This is where Noah saw the, the rainbow. rainbow for the first time. And this Joseph, is... you can almost imagine that rainbow. When you go there with me, yeah. you will say, oh, my lands, I can see it. Oh. I mean, it is like a panoramic view for a rainbow. In fact, we saw a rainbow the day we were there. there Did you rainbow. really? The day we were there, there was oh, a rainbow. Oh, my goodness. Come on. So it, that's, that's the only place that we really wanted to linger and from although the ark is amazing, the ark is a symbol of judgment. The ark is a symbol of redemption. This is a symbol of hope. This is hope. This is a new beginning. This is the first place we read in the Bible where God gives uh, His covenant. Come on! And you're like this is where God gave His covenant to mankind, and I'm here. Wow, Paul! And, you, and we really wanted to linger there. Like, let, let's wait. And, and you know, let's let's wait for a rainbow. <laughs> I mean, we and really we saw, wanted to we saw, we and saw you one. saw one, yeah. <laughs> you know, Joseph, when we go to these sites, and you'll see it when you go with me. I mean, I get up early in the morning and preparing all my notes, reviewing all my information. I'm speaking to the local authority to make sure I've got everything right. For me, it is nonstop brain activity. Wow. When we get to the sites, I'm always. Isn't you, it the truth? You I'm work the first at the location. Oh, yeah. oh wow. Everybody else is following behind. I'm trying to choose where we're going to film. Wow, and right. so I never really get to just enjoy. For me, it is total work. Just getting it done. From and everybody's to night. got their own responsibilities. But, but Somebody Paul, has to carry the batteries. Did Somebody you have a window where you could appreciate it? Is that what you're saying? Yes. And I got to go there a second time. But this impacted me too. This, this, I, I this mean, did. I took a pause, maybe five minutes. <laughs> but I mean, it was, it was enough to say, yeah. oh my goodness, look where we are. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. You went back. I went back. This uh, Noah's Ark and the altar impacted me so much, and uh, my wife really wanted to see Noah's Ark. Uh, we actually celebrated our 20th anniversary. We took a, a road trip. In they Turkey. rented a car in Istanbul and drove to Noah's Ark. Did Noah's you Ark. really? Uh -huh. That yeah. is amazing. Turkey is beautiful. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. It is very safe, very friendly, tourist friendly for sure. Uh, but we drove all the way to Noah's Ark. We couldn't drive all the way up to the Ark uh, to the. Uh, altar, we had to stop a little bit early and walk the rest of the way uh, because it was muddy and rainy. And the car you walked the to the altar from the ark? Uh, well, just from the bow of the ark, yeah. Are you kidding me? Wow, Paul. Well, so I'm, glad I, I'm glad I wasn't with you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's far, I take it. Oh, well, it's a hike. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and rugged. I did not know that. And rugged. Yeah. So, so you went back a second time. We went back a second time. And because we were only there to see, we didn't have to film, didn't have to think about uh, you know, everything connected to filming, we got to see a few more things that we didn't get to see before. Okay. Uh, petrified wood. Really? Yeah, and you can actually see the different layers of the wood. Is it in the stone? Is that how you see it? No, it's, it's talking about the ark. It's closer to the ark. It's but crumbling the, off of the ark. It's crumbling off. You know, the, when the earthquake happened, the dirt fell from around it. Yes. And so parts of the... The steep side of the ark have collapsed. That and is you, amazing. And it's wood. 
It's yeah. petrified wood. The gopher wood. And uh, you get, I got to see spots on the columns or what, what would be the structural parts of the ark where you could actually see oxidation. So there was some type of metal that was used as rivets. Uh, a you know, Ron Wyatt sounded rivet. Did he really? Yeah, Noah had, Noah had technology. Yes. Rivets. That's amazing, Paul. So you going there by yourself the second time, was it even more like powerful? Was it more? Um, it was. It was more informational for me. Informational, yeah. education. Because I got my, I got my initial experience yeah. the first time. You see the ark, and then uh, when you go to the altar, and we were there for six days. Mm -hmm. and, well, you and were. I was there longer. It's it's kind of one of those places you don't want to leave. Yeah. But this place really, really impacted me. Did it really? This stone. Oh my goodness. Tell me what what happened in you. What. Was it revelation? Was it? You know, I saw the stone because you got to walk. <laughs> Joseph, you got to be in shape to do this thing. Okay. God, I lost weight. So you got to walk up over this hill. You got to walk along the top of the hill. And finally, you come to the stone. But when I got to the stone, I've been studying archaeology and these things for years and years and years. When I saw this, yeah, I knew, oh, wow. This is really it. This is it. This is not. This is not a natural form. Form. This is an altar, man. And of course, the Kurds say that it is the altar. There's no reason to doubt it. It's amazing. But just standing, I, I filmed on top of this altar. Did you? And then I turned around. It's pretty steep, by the way. Okay. There's a big washout now that's on the other side of it. Yep. And when I stood there and looked up, I said, Paul, and Joel. Guys, this is where the rainbow appeared. And it's very impacting, isn't it, Paul? Mm. You're, you're connecting dots. The whole time you're there, you're connecting dots. And also, one thing we haven't mentioned is that in the floodplain below are these massive drogue stones. They were the stones that balanced the ark. In, in the ancient world, they hung huge, huge stones from the sides of ships. Okay. So the ship would not capsize in bad weather. Keep it balanced. Well, there was no worse waters than the flood. No. These stones are massive. Huh. They have the original holes where the ropes went through, and they found 26 of them. No kidding. And so as the waters begin to calm, and as the ark begin to slow, they begin cutting those stones. And you can follow the trail of those stones and by following the trail, you can follow the way the ark moved through the through and turned, finally went up into the lower mountain, which is called Mount Judy. Okay. That's what it's called today. That's remarkable. But it's one of the mountains of Ararat. Okay. The, it, those stones. How, how tall are they? How big about, like when you see one? Are they? Size of a car. Size of a car. Well, you can only see half of them. Half of them. Because half okay. is in the ground. In the ground. Okay. I see. Uh, and the ones that are standing up straight are five to six feet tall. So. Wow. And, so half and they have crosses carved on them. I mean, they've been commemorated for thousands of years by believers. The locals know. And yeah. what else is impressive? And I don't think you talked about this in your program, but the stones are now used as headstones right. for, in a graveyard. Really? A lot yeah. of them have been fragmented. Okay. And they're used, they were, in ancient times, they were considered to be holy because they were connected to Noah. Of course. So they use them as tombstones. Yes. In a graveyard. And so you're, I'll when, show you when, when you're walking around wait. this village, Thank you, Rick. which uh, Ron Wyatt recognized as the village of eight, uh -huh. the eight people that were on the ark, yep. and the original village where uh, Noah and his family lived, it, and you're walking through this graveyard, yeah. and all of a sudden you realize this could be the oldest graveyard in oh. history. I, yeah, I never in had history. that thought, but that's true. The oldest graveyard in history, and wow. you're right there. Uh, and, and there's for, something else. For various Please. reasons, the place cannot be excavated. Not many foreigners come to that area. Okay. And the village of eight is not very nice. Okay. So we're driving through there in our car, and a man comes running out from his house, stops us. He's so excited that somebody foreign is there. <laughs> he invites us into his yard for a cup of tea. Well, that's very Turkish, Turkish. And not just anyone oh, can go there. because you so have hospitable. To, you have to be a friend of a friend for them to let you into the village. That's you've, correct. You've got a great story about having coffee at, somebody, at, a, at a place one time. That was a funny story. That is a funny story. <laughs> anyway, yeah. But anyway, so we went in, we're having tea. He says, would you like to see something? Yes. I said, yeah, I would. So he took us over, and he had made a terrace out of old stones from a Byzantine church that had been destroyed 
in an earthquake, which means they were about 1,700 years old. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of all those stones in his yard is the oldest known engraving of Noah's Ark in the world. There it is. I looked at it, and it's, it's because it's so old, it's important because it's shaped exactly like the structure on the hill. It's like you're looking at that structure on the hill in stone, 1,700 Which years means old. That someone saw it at the right now, it's all underground. But previously, wow. it was. Visible. They looked at it and they recreated it yeah. with an image. Yeah. Man. We saw so many wonderful things. I've seen a picture well, of that. There are more story. stories to be told. There are. The I'm same sure. guy thinks he knows where there's a huge sarcophagus. With a giant. Actually, he's, he's, he's seen it, but they recovered it because they don't want anybody to loot it. Now that is interesting. It is. That's very interesting. The Bible's all verifiable. It's all verifiable. Of course, that would have been a giant that appeared after the flood. After the flood, yeah. which has a whole lot of questions to it too. But It does. But, it, but there it is. That means the angels probably did more. So this leads me to a question. Okay. And the question is the days of Noah, the uh -huh. things we're dealing with. And I'd like to ask Pastor Paul, where are we in history? Do you see this as prophetic, Pastor Paul? You well, know, a few things. First of all, the reappearance of the ark is a sign. Yes. I, I think it's a spiritual, supernatural sign that we're at the end of the end of the days. Yes. Uh, and so that's important to take note. And at the moment, there are a lot of uh, new researchers coming out proving that it is the ark. Yes. So yes, we're at the end of, end of days. When we were at the altar, uh, what came to my mind was judgment and salvation mm. and a new beginning. And if it's going to be like it was in the days of Noah, <laughs> and of course there are a lot of things to talk about there, but there will be a judgment, <laughs> there oh, will man. be a salvation, and there will be a new beginning. A new beginning. Uh, and that's what really impacted me when we were there, that we're right at the edge of this judgment that yeah. will be happening. We're right at the edge of this new beginning that will be happening. So you see this as a prophetic sign. Here we are at the end of the age. Man, and it, you know, because your perspective, and you know, without getting into anything, I really enjoy your vantage point, your worldview, seeing things from the lens of, of where you come from, Pastor Paul. So when you talk about these things with, with biblical foundation and looking through the lens of scripture with where we are, I'm very intrigued because, you know, we live in one part of the world, you live in another, and I was fascinated and honestly inspired by much of what you taught me while we were in, in Russia. Well, I'm glad we got to talk, yeah. <laughs> but uh, traveling and living overseas and seeing a lot of things that most people don't get to see really broadens your worldview Yes, and it changes the way you see everything in life. Yeah. Can I tell you about one please. more thing? Please. Oh, please, Rick. Just to the side <clears throat> of the village of eight is the ruins of this Byzantine church. I told you about that. Yes. I mean, it's really in ruins. Wow. But the Byzantines believed it was the site of Noah's house wow. in the village. Okay. There's really no reason to doubt it. The Byzantines lived a lot closer to those events than we did. Okay. And so it's it's really in ruins, but just not far from there, maybe a hundred meters tall, Just up the hill. Just up the hill. There's kind of a slope that goes up to another group of rocks and hills. There is a stone fence, which marks off the entire area of a hill. And that stone fence is so old, it dates to the time of Noah. And it's almost as though it's been sanctified you're not allowed to touch this area. And mm. if you go beyond that stone fence, up that hill, there's a huge stone, which likely was a secondary altar, which was used by Noah's family once they moved into the valley. Wow. It's right there. Right there. And when you see that fence, I mean, you really realize this probably was put here by Noah and his sons. Mm. And then just beyond, probably where they kept animals, it was like the holy mountain, you don't touch it, you don't go there because this is where we worship God. And there's this stone where some believe was a secondary altar used by Noah and his family. I think that's amazing. That is amazing. They were people of sacrifice. They were bringing offerings to the Lord all the time. Wow. And I think that's also an end time message. I do too. That is amazing. We need to be people that are sacrificial in what we give, how we worship. Yes. If we want to survive difficult... And by the way, talk about survive. Hmm. How do you think Noah felt when everything's gone? When they opened the door and walked out and they saw a world of mud. A world of mud. A world of mud. Mm. And they 
had to have good family relationships because <laughs> there wasn't anybody else. <laughs> they had any struggles. Uh, they had to learn how to get along. There was nobody else. Family meeting. <laughs> Imagine wow. what you would feel, even though the previous world was filled with violence, at least there were other human beings to interact. Yeah. But if you get off and there's nothing but mud. My goodness. You know, he was the inheritor of the world. He was the inheritor of mud. Oh, and Joseph, the mud is still there. I mean, the mud, 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 mud. Huh. Thousands of years. Paul, it's the truth, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And now he and his family, mm. releasing those animals, starting life all over again. And as the waters went down, they first lived up above. But as the, as the land began to really dry out, they began to follow down until they moved into the valley. Okay. Anyway, you'll see it all. I can't wait to see it. I got to tell you, this topic is so intriguing, so thrilling, and I believe highly prophetic. Well, there'll be cynics that will say we've lost our mind. That's okay. Well, well also, doesn't bother me. They might call right. us nuts, open, but we're screwed under the right pole. Open up a whole other thing. Yes. Where Noah's Ark landed okay. right. is probably where? Not where the Garden of Eden was. Yes. Oh, my goodness. And when we... It doesn't mean God... It's interesting. The Bible doesn't say that God made him there. It says God made the man and put him in the Garden of Eden. Okay, that, that is a new wrinkle in my brain. That's well, amazing. It's important because when you go to Jerusalem, you go to the Dome of the Rock, there's a big sign which says on top of the, you know, the stone where Abraham offered Isaac, it's called the, I think, the Stone of Destiny. And the Jews say that's, on that stone is where God made Adam. It wow. says that right in Jerusalem. Wow. But it says God made man and put him in the Garden of Eden. That's amazing. Which was... Where they are planted. Yeah. So that's I mean everybody knows that's where the Garden of Eden was. That Geographically, is that whole area, uh -huh. the area of Van, uh, matches the location of the Garden of Eden. Okay. Uh, and when we arrived, and I, you see the lake Van, it's huge, huge lake. It's beautiful. Really? All of a sudden, beautiful. I realized Garden of Eden. When I think garden, maybe I think of my grandmother's garden. A few <laughs> a acres. Little garden. A little garden. A just little a little garden. place. Or maybe you think of a large city park. <laughs> right. You know, this beautiful city park with all this landscaping and stuff. But when we got out of the airplane and I realized this is the Garden of Eden and you have mountains and you have valleys and you have lakes and you have fields. <laughs> yeah. It's like the Garden of Eden. It was like a kingdom. Was big. Like a kingdom. It was, it was big. A kingdom. Yeah. The and, kingdom of Eden. And even to this day, it is beautiful. Really? When it's green, it's like, wow, it's just lush. It's so beautiful. And so the ark landed at the very same place that the Garden of Eden was, meaning he started over, God started over at the same place. God is so intentional. He's so purposeful. He is. He's very calculated. You know, some people say, well, God works in strange and mysterious ways, but he does not. If you study the Bible, you find God's very predictable. Yes. God always pays attention to dates, numbers, times, places, seasons. God is very intentional and calculated in what he does. Praise God. Amen. Well, both of you, Rick, Sir, uh, Pastor Paul, I want to thank you for being here today. It's been fun. You guys have just been so gracious to you know offer your time so generously, and I'm, I'm just thankful for you. Thanks for letting us be with you, and thank you for letting us be with yes, you. Thank you. It's yeah. been great. Oh, praise God. Well, uh, you have a, a book coming out on this topic. It'll be it'll be at the end of summer. Anything you'd like to say about it? It's going to be a very interesting book. <laughs> it's going to be great. Fallen angels, giants, monsters, and the world before the flood. We're even going to get into monsters. Monsters. Where do monsters come from oh, in the man. ancient world? Well, I'm going to give you a suggestion. I'll tell you, I am so intrigued by it, and you bring such great biblical truth. I just, I can't wait, Rick. So Thank everybody, you. everybody's watching. Let me look right at you. Uh, if you're watching right now, you can go to renner.org. You can learn more about Pastor Paul there. You can see the Moscow Good News Church and some, you get to speak Russian, but it's a wonderful, wonderful setting. And um, I want to say one more thing. Um, you know, Rick, you gave me a gift, and I just want to mention it very quickly. Okay. Very quickly at the end. Um, I was in a meeting recently, and you were very gracious to bestow this on me. And this, this, this is very meaningful to me. I gave one to Kenneth Copeland, yep. Billy Bram, That's right. you, George and Terry Pearson, Jeremy Pearson, Andrew Womack. And I got to be included in the gang. Yeah, you were one of the gang. Thank you. You're welcome. And the significance of this is this is a mirror that they would, they would look at themselves with in the early history. Th that is a... Mirror from about 2,500 years ago. And scripturally speaking, with this type of 
uh, mirror. They, this is where the scripture comes from, uh, knowing in part, prophesying in part, seeing through a glass dimly. Dimly, and the, and the Greek word says seeing through a glass enigmas. 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 Thank Some you. things are a little bit of an enigma. You got to look at it in different ways. And that's what that mirror represents. Rick, I just want to say thank you for this. You're welcome. I want to look right at everybody. See, this, this here is just a very treasured gift to me because it represents, to me, things prophetic, revelatory, but it's just a wonderful gift from someone I just adore. Thank you. And I'm grateful. Thank you. Both of you, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Praise God. Well, I'm going to pray for everybody, and then we'll, uh, we'll thank God. Father, I bless everybody watching today. Everybody who's watching, I pray that what the Lord is speaking to you, what you're seeking God for, would come to pass in your life that the journey you're on, the revelatory journey that God's calling you to, that it would just begin to manifest for you right now. In these days we live in, to quote Rick, the things we talk about about the future are not meant to scare you, they're meant to prepare you, and we have a bright future in Jesus' name. Amen. I say to you right now, on a bad day you're the best there is. And a man or woman with a revelation is not at the mercy of a culture losing its mind and going mad. You're called for this time. And I'm just so blessed that you're here with us today. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Renner.org, ladies and gentlemen, God bless you. And please watch this. I want to say a very special thank you to our partners. Whether you've been a partner with us from the very beginning, or if you've recently become part of our partner family, we simply want to say thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, Thank you because it means so much that you're standing with us. We're accomplishing a lot together. And I'll tell you, if you're interested in becoming part of our partner family, I'd encourage you to go to josephz.com or text the keyword give to 719-259-0029. You know, we want to welcome you to the family and we will be calling you. If you become a partner, we call you regularly and we love talking to you. Our team calls you. It's not a call center. It's our team. We love our partners. I hope you'll consider it. I hope you're praying about it and I hope you become a part of our partner family today. Have you noticed the collision of good and evil, light versus darkness? It's happening every day right in front of us. I'm Joseph Z, and I just wrote this book, Breaking Hell's Economy. It's a prophetic book dealing with this exact issue. What we're facing right now is a collision of kingdoms. It's the kingdom of darkness versus God's kingdom. It's the kingdom of light versus the gates of hell. And what you're seeing is this collision taking place, but we are promised that the church, the called out ones, would overcome and we would never be taken over by the gates of hell. In the times we're living in, you can see incredible, outstanding breakthrough in every area of your life. Much like the children of Israel that went through the darkness and shined as a light in Goshen in the middle of difficulty. This book is a prophetic book for you and your family to thrive in the middle of difficult times. You know, there's nothing new under the sun, and that's what we're seeing over and over again, is this challenge. You've seen the Great Depression back in the 20s and 30s. You've seen wars and world wars and many things that have come against society. And this pattern repeats itself. And I'm here to tell you today, even Jesus dealt with the same issue that we're facing today when he was a child. Many people have been through this before, and the outcome determines what you believe. What you believe and what you know will bring a great outcome for you. And this book is a prophetic book that will help you navigate and break out of this present evil age. Get ready to be the light in darkness. Get ready to be the light in Goshen that God has called you to be. Breaking Hell's Economy is for you. I encourage you to order your copy today.